Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to show you how to generate sound wave art. So you can use this to sell as digital prints or you can put it on products as well, entirely up to you. But I'm going to show you how to generate the sound waves and I'll give you a couple of basic ideas of uh, putting it into Photoshop and using it in Photoshop. So there's tons and tons of them around online, tons on Etsy, tons of best sellers. They're super popular and basically it's a personalized design where you can add a song or the sound wave of a special song to someone for anniversaries or things like that. Any kind of special song that means something to people. So it's totally free, totally easy to do. The two sites we're going to be using is clidio.com and convert.ing-now.com. So I'll put both of those links in the description below. Um, so let's go ahead and search here for Brian Adams. I already did a test of this. So I'm going to grab this song here. So find the song you want. I'm going to hit pause. Don't worry about the ads starting as well at the start. Just come up to the uh, URL at the top and copy the URL of your song on YouTube. Go to Audio Cutter Online. Under this drop down here, oops, paste in your URL. Don't copy that. And that just takes like maybe a minute or so to generate. So what I think I'll do is just pause the video while that generates and then I'll come back in a second. Okay, so that just generated, took probably maybe two minutes for that to do. And what happens, it lands you on this page and it'll be playing like this. Okay, so just hit pause. What, what we need to do is just drag the ends out here and uh, just highlight what you want to get of the song. So obviously we want the whole song. And you'll notice there's a cut button down here. If you drag it out too far, it fades out so you can't get it. So you just have to drag it in a little bit there just to make sure you get all of the song and then go ahead and hit cut. So again, that's going to take a minute or so to generate. So I'll just pause the video for a second while it does that. Okay, so it's generated that I'm going to go ahead hit download and it should download pretty quick. So it took maybe took another minute or so to do that. So so far it hasn't taken long at all. Got the MP3 down here. So it's generated that soundtrack and then I'm going to come over to convert.ing-now.com. Uh, over cool stuff here mp3 audio wave graphic generator which I'm already on scroll down here you can click this button and browse your computer for the file or I can just drag and drop it here as well which is the easiest way this bit doesn't take long so we'll just leave it uh, rolling now and what that's doing is generating that waveform now so just give it a moment Okay, here it comes. That's not it. This is it. Okay, so we've got a couple of options here. I like to go for the biggest size we can. You can change the color or have a, a background on it if you want. But to be honest, we don't really um, uh, we don't really need to, to use any of these color options because we can do that in Photoshop. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK, and then it's just showing me again. Okay, and here it is. So this is our exact wave format of that song. I'm going to right click, save image as, and call it Brian Adams Soundwave. Okay, call it whatever you want, doesn't matter. Hit save, and that's going to go ahead and download. So we now have that Soundwave file, so you can go and use that wherever you want to use it. If you don't use Photoshop, whatever, you've got the Soundwave. So that is how you generate the Soundwaves. But I'm just going to very quickly pop Photoshop open uh, and create a canvas. So I'm going to go File New, uh, 18 by 24, and I'm going to use RGB color here, um, 300 resolution. Hit Create. Now, don't worry too much about the size. You can make these all different shapes and sizes. Uh, it's just I've got a mock-up here that I can put it in quickly as well after. So. Um, You'll need to see your layers panel over here on the right hand side. If you don't see that, you can go to Windows, a window and make sure you've got layers checked and you can uncheck anything between 3D and version history, all depending on what panels you want to see over here. Um, and that's just down to personal preference. So what I'm going to do is turn, uh, click that padlock to turn that background layer off. And then I'm going to find my sound wave and I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. So uh, whether I download it to my downloads, here it is. So I'm just the easiest way to bring it into Photoshop is drag and drop, okay? And then it's in free transform, which I'll show you in a minute. But for now, just we just press enter and it's in there. 
So over here on the layers, this is our sound wave layer, which we can turn on and off with this eye. Okay, and what we can do in the empty gray area, here, if we double click, and then we can click um, color overlay, and then click OK. And then ev now, whenever we want to change the color of this, we can click the words color overlay or double click the words, and then we can click this little uh, color picker box here. You can move the the uh, cursor around on the color picker you can move this sliding bar up and down to get colors or you can put a hex code in here where it says b734a9 that's the hex code of that i'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel but you can change the color anytime you want and make uh, lots of colors as well so you may want to throw some text in here and to do that you select your text tool from this side and then just start typing so i'm going to put our song like this Okay, now when we're in when we've got the text tool selected over here, if I move my cursor away, you see we get the little cross hairs on there, which means I can move it around. But if I actually use the move tool from over here, okay, when I move it, I actually get all these pink lines and guides. So I know that I can get it dead center that way, like that. And then I'm gonna come back to my text tool. I'm gonna triple click in here to select it all and then I can change the color from up here so again you can use this color palette over here or if I move my cursor away I can pick the color of the sound wave there to match it as well so if you want to match it uh, you can do that you may want to change the size of the font to do that it's dead easy with the with the text tool selected and all the the font selected or highlighted hover over the two T's at the top here and drag left and right and you can easily resize the text up there like that okay and you can also by the way if I triple click in here again you can also change the font by this drop down menu here and your fonts will look different to mine it all depends on what fonts you've got installed on your computer but you can use your arrow keys if you want as well and you can just fly through all the fonts you got and if you want to change out fonts go ahead and do that so I'm just gonna put a couple of layers of text down here I'm just gonna go Brian Adams I'm just going to click over here on the layers panel just to deselect that and then please forgive me then I'm going to use the move tool here just to make sure that I got it in the center like that move this layer over here like this back to the text tool triple click in there and then let's just reduce the size down here triple click in there reduce the size down here okay so you can add whatever text you want in there you can change the colors of your sound wave you can move stuff around line it up so <clears throat> um, ideally you want to get like a photograph in there or something so I've got a photograph here on my desktop and myself and my wife so you can drag in a photograph this is when you drag an image in like that is in free transform which means we can grab these handles and we can resize it as we want so you can work an image in there like that where you have it on the layers panel over here will be whether it's above or below so at the moment this image is above the sound wave now if I press command T or control T oops, there you go uh, I can drag this out like this now if this was a landscape one and then what I'm going to do is drag this layer below the sound wave one. Now, sometimes uh, for some designs, you would want the sound wave, you know, obviously this isn't the perfect picture for it, but you'd have the sound wave above the photograph like that. And you could work that into the design. If I just quickly go to Etsy, I'm sure there's one. Well, there's a masked one there. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, there's surely going to be one. So there's one there you can just see it the sound wave is over the picture like that okay so that's something that a lot of people do um, and the mask as well so let me show you the mask now what I'm gonna do is position the photograph there then I'm gonna move the sound wave up now <clears throat> you can maximize the space of these sound waves by make sure you got the layer highlighted of the sound wave press command T or control T now, when we just when we grab these handles, it resizes it in proportion. So what we can do is, if we hold down Shift, you can go drag up on the center one and down on the bottom center one, and it's still the same sound wave, but uh, we've used a lot more of our canvas area. So it's a good way to fill things, and it's a good way to do the mask. 
So right now, I've got the sound wave layer above the photograph layer. Uh, I've stretched out the sound wave by pressing Command T or Control T and then holding Shift and moving it out. And the photograph and the sound wave are pretty much the same the same size. Okay, and what I mean by that, if I press Command T or Control T on the photograph, the photograph's not cutting across the sound wave like that. Okay, what you want to do is make sure your photograph is full like that okay and it, it covers the whole of the sound wave thing then what I'm going to do on this photograph layer is right click and click convert to smart object like that okay then I'm going to highlight the sound wave layer and I'm going to select the magic wand tool from over here now you may possibly if you right click on it you may be on quick selection tool or object selection tool so just if it it's the one two three the fourth one down if it's on one of these others, right click and select magic wand and then just click on the sound wave file there. Yeah, so you get, you need to make sure you select it on the right layer uh, and then switch. Click the eye drop here and switch off the sound wave layer so it's not seen. So you just see all the lines or the outline of it. Then highlight your photograph layer and then go to the bottom here of your, where your layers panel is and click this little icon that looks like the Japanese flag. OK, and boom. So we've now got our sound wave with a photograph in. Okay, now the photograph might not be in the best position, or this could be like one of your best sellers, perhaps. So, to, and we we made it so it filled the whole thing. So if we'd made the photograph smaller, we'd have a horrible straight line going across there. But now we've got a little bit more control of it. Still going to be tricky, depending on the, you know, because you never know with when people are sending you photographs, you could get all kinds of stuff. And sometimes it can be difficult, but what we can do now, this layer here where the photograph is, you can see we got the, it's linked to this mask here as well, which is making the mask. But if we double click on the part where the photograph is in the top left hand corner of this tiny thumbnail, double click, it opens up this new tab. So these tabs are, you know, just like when you're in Chrome or whatever, uh, you can see we've got two tabs now. So here we can turn this photograph off and I don't uh, let me just grab this dog photograph I don't really have another photograph but we can put that in press return and then we can hit close on this tab and hit save okay and we now have or we now have the dog in there in a minute once it closes just give it a moment okay so we now got the dog in there so you can flip those images out uh, on demand now of course this is only going to work for Brian Adams uh, please forgive me because it's that one but um, you could, you'd have to do the same process again for different songs as well but if we double click in there again um, sometimes you're gonna have this problem if I press command T or control T sometimes and I'm just gonna reduce that and hit save just so you can see what may possibly happen Okay, or you may want to reduce the size of the photograph to get the faces in. Now you can see it looks terrible now because it hasn't filled the whole area. So you're going to have to do a bit of a workaround for it. Um, something you could do is just add a background color. So if we go, I've selected the bottom layer here. If we go layer, new fill layer, solid color, click OK. And then on the color palette here, let's try and pick one of these colors like this. Okay, and it really is a bit of a workaround, so I don't know how good this is going to look. And what I might do is get the rubber out. Let's hit save. And I might just try and soften some of these edges, maybe. Okay, we've still got a nasty, horrible line. Let me try one last thing. I'm going to highlight this layer and see if we can go... No, nope. what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, rasterize the layer right click convert to smart object okay and then let's just see okay I'm gonna yeah okay what I'm gonna do I'm gonna just try one thing this may work it may not I'm gonna I'm gonna rasterize this image now hopefully you won't face this problem I'm going to use my rubber tool which is here okay up here I'm going to increase the size of it 
and I've got it really soft. So let's just see if it works first. In fact, I should make it a little bigger. Whoop, not that big. Okay, that's way too big. I'm just going to blur around. I probably blurred a little bit of the dog out there. But let's just blur it and soften it and see. Hopefully, we won't have such an aggressive line there. Okay, so let's close this now. Now, if you get a particularly bad photograph from a customer, then you can always say to them, do you have another photograph? So this is just one problem that you may encounter. So that's not too bad. A little bit of extra work on there will probably tidy it up a little bit more. So once you're happy with it, I'm going to go file, save as. Okay, I'd recommend you use export, but I just want to do this quickly. Uh, I'm going to name it test sound. I'm going to choose PNG. And I'm going to save it on my desktop there like that. And then I'm going to throw it into this mock-up real quick just so we can have a look. And where did I save it? There it is. Like I say, I used save as there. I definitely recommend you go file export, which I'll show you quickly, just in case you're not familiar with it. Hit close up here. Okay, it's a big old image, so it just takes a minute. Photoshop seems to be taking it ages doing these things at the moment. I don't know if they've had an update. <clears throat> Boom, there we go. So, bit ropey there with that, uh, with the green and the dog and everything. Probably you would most likely have a couple in there, but that's how you do it. Now, just one last thing. I'll just show you just in case. I did uh, file save as. What I recommend you do is file export save for web legacy. Okay, and then it's going to bring you up another options panel. Okay, and... Uh, I recommend you use uh, PNG as well. So save it like that. You can see it's a huge file. That's why it's taking so long. So use file export. It's going to take ages if I sit here and wait it, wait for it. Um, but yeah, go and have a look on, on Etsy. There's tons of ideas. It's really easy to do. It doesn't take you long. Um, and it's very personal for people as well. Okay, thanks guys. And I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.